Hey team, this is Jason. I'm just um, wanted to share with you guys those that missed out on Friday, me casting some vision, and for the worship team, for us as a, as a church, and what we're doing, and we're attempting our desires, our vision, our mission, and some other things um, for the worship team. I just wanted to go over the sheet for everybody that missed it, and any new people that are coming onto the worship team that that will be watching this. So. Yeah, so I'll be, uh, this sheet will be available, so I'm just going to go through the sheet. And basically, you know, Harvest Renewal has been going through some good, good, uh, growing pains and awesome things the Lord's been doing in our midst. He's bringing us forward. He's bringing some changes and good things. And, and we just wanted to keep running with that. And I wanted to put on paper and share with you all the things that are kind of unsaid. The things that, you know, nobody kind of really says, but everybody kind of wonders what's the true values or some of the principles or culture that we have and some of the guidelines that we have to be on a worship team. So a lot of this stuff is I'm sharing is what it means to be on the worship team, where we're going as a worship team, our vision, our mission, and all that kind of stuff. So to put it plainly on the sheet there, the mission says, you know, to release genuine heart responses to God as in Revelation 4 and to partner with the Holy Spirit and what he wants to do in the meetings, in every meeting that we do. And like John 5, 19, you know, I can only do what I see the Father doing. And that's really what we desire to do. That we are really seeking to do this, what we call presence-based worship. Uh, it's not just a concert. It's not just, you know, you know, start and stop songs that we want to do. Although we love and value the written songs and every song that, you know, getting tight on every changes, the bridges, courses, verses, and getting tight as a worship band and a team. But it wouldn't be just that. We would do that really tight, excellent um, music that launches us into worship, that brings prophetic worship, the presence of the Lord that we desire in the midst of us in the midst of our meetings, and everything that we do, that's what we desire, the presence of God. So, yeah, it's not just a Christian concert we're going for, it's not a performance, but we're going for genuine heart worship that seeks the presence of God, that flows with the presence of God, that partners with Holy Spirit and what He wants to do in meetings. So that's our mission. And and like I put on the sheet, let's not take this mission lightly. You know, like, to each have a part to play in this, to embrace where we're going, the, 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 to be faithful with the little, you know, we've been going through some growing pains, some changes in the in members on the team, and just let's be, not be worried, and let's be faithful, God, with what He's given us, and the people, and the time, and energy, and everything, let's be faithful, and take it seriously, and you see in Zechariah 4.10, it says, who dares make light of small beginnings? Let's not dare to make it light. You know, let's just take it serious. Every moment that God's bringing us into is take it serious. And the next part on the sheet is our vision is for worship that proclaims the truth of who God is, His attributes, His character, His ways, etc. That we proclaim that and brings heart revelation about these truths and seeks to bring glory and honor to Jesus. And that's our desire to have our heart response to who He is and we give honor to Jesus. And the next one that the culture of an that we would that worship would cultivate an atmosphere for his presence that would cultivate an atmosphere for his kingdom of a god that would just, it, it, that would break in through worship that the, the atmosphere shifts through our worship and also next that that, that these that worship that would release songs and the sound that move hearts that through our worship through our playing instrumentally and, and singing phrases that would release hearts you know revelation of jesus and then release healing and power and that's kind of one down the um, the next point is like that the, the release is power in meetings. That when we do worship, you know, and minister teams praying or the prophetic words or people after just worshiping God, they have power that was released to bring healing in bodies and their hearts for emotional issues, both and. And that also that releases the word of God, the word of the Lord, the prophetic song. Either like a singer would sing prophetically because they got something during worship or an elder or somebody in the in the body would have the word of the Lord and just share that and we would flow with that because the worship that just cultivates and releases that in the atmosphere. We also want worship that teaches what we believe and teaches that the kingdom theology, not just, you know, other things. There's a lot of things going around, but we truly have, you know, lyrics and songs that teach, you know, kingdom truths. 
And so, yeah, this, these are the, the, our vision or values. So what does it mean, you know, when you're on a part of the worship team, that's what we're going for. And so being a part of worship team, we also want to cultivate a culture of worship and a culture of, of members of honor. You know, we, 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 how we function, how we roll together, how we have relationships with each other, and you have relationships with me and I with you and you with each other. There's honor. And I put a definition my, myself on this paper that said, living out respectful relationships that seek love above all, above everything. Love, loving each other and calling out love in each other and that patience is activated in us and, and also there's, you know, calling each other forward in higher places that, you know, and releasing good character and all these things that love is cultivated. And I put on some examples on the sheet of how to what a culture of honor looks like, what some practical ways a culture of honor looks like, and one of them is being punctual. That we truly like we show up on, when we say we're, we're supposed to show up. When practice is at 6.30, we're there at 6.30, if not early. You know, on a Sunday morning, when we say 8.30, you know, sound check and practice is I mean, it's time to be there. So it's, it's be there at 8.30. Let's honor each other because other people get their own time and then we're standing around waiting for so-and-so to get there, you know, for somebody to get there before we can truly practice. So it's honor each other in that timing, you know, let's be there, when we say we're going to be there, when we're supposed to be there, because other people are waiting on us, so, you know, let's honor each other in that, and also the next point of a culture of honor is that mature, we seek to have mature character, a character that demonstrates the love of God, that that's not, you know, wavered, that not just, you know, our character is just maturing, the next one thing too is a positive attitude, that, that we're, it's so easy to focus on negatives and what's lacking, what we should and shouldn't be doing, and but that has, seeks a positive attitude. But there's you know there's a place for you know discussion and about you know how it can be better. But there's a bad thing when it turns into an attitude. We always come with this attitude of like it's just a negative. And so the next point is too is pursuing a righteous lifestyle. That how we live at home when we go home, we go to our rooms, we go do our own things by ourselves. That we're seeking. And that we're living still before God. We're still living before His presence, before Him. That we're not having one face at church and one face somewhere else. That we have a all-around lifestyle, continual lifestyle with God, and continual lifestyle with His presence, continual lifestyle of seeking every moment that he, that he gives us. That we could truly pursue that. And also having genuine hearts. We want hearts that are genuine in worship, not just going through the motions. We don't want to just go go up there, get up there, do songs, and get sit down when our hearts aren't just in it. You know, we have to have hearts that are just on fire, that cultivate that passion in us individually, that we you know we're genuine in our worship, we're genuine in what we're doing. The next thing is communication. Our honor culture of honor has as people that seek to have good communication. And some of that is, you know, that's reading emails, that's returning phone calls. When you get a phone call from somebody left you a message, call them back. When you have text messages, you know, text them back. Even if you're busy, say, hey, sorry, I'm busy. I'll call you back later. Just let us know what's going on because we don't know. I call sometimes. I wait to hear back. I text a lot of times and I wait to hear back. And it's just like, is anybody getting my phone calls? Anybody getting my texts? It's just, you know, this communicating. You know, communication is in every single relationship. It's not just with worship teams, your job, your friends, your you know, spouses, and everything. It's just seek, seek to communicate well. And that includes, you know, signing up on the worship team email. You know, please. You know, I'm going to try to send out more reminders about signing up on the email when you're ready, when you're available, and when you're not available. But please sign up. Sign up so you, I know I don't have to waste, you know, 30 minutes to an hour every single week trying to figure out who's on the worship team, who's not, who's available, and who's not. Just sign up on the worship team schedule if you're available in one week, and then if you're not available, it's just it's your, either or. It's not like I'm in between. It's like I'm available or I'm not. So just sign up if you're available on the worship team. And the next thing on the point is to pursue godly conflict resolution. If we have an offense, if we have a problem with somebody, if somebody said something or somebody did something or whatever, Let's not go around to other friends and talk about it. We seek to go to that person first and quickly. You know, you know, try to seek these things out fast to resolve conflicts, resolve um, problems. That we pursue each other. We honor our relationships to protect our relationship, to pursue one another and talk about our offense or our problem and try to assume the best in each other and talk to. Hey, I, I thought you said this. I thought you meant this, is it really what you meant, you know, it kind of bothered me, can you just share more about that, or when you did that, can you not do that again, or let's talk about it, you know, let's just talk about it, relationships, communicate, let's do all those things, and, and there's probably more, and so, and another thing, on Thursday practices, 
you know, it's, it's, you know, Thursday practice will change here and there. We're trying to pursue a right way to that we can all grow in good theology of worship and good understanding of what we're doing in worship that would cultivate and call out each other in worship and prophetic worship and his presence and what presence-based worship means and all this kind of stuff. And we're probably, I'm gleaning a lot from um, Bethel, the Bethel School worship uh, teachings that I've received, and also you know IHOP stuff and other things that you know we can have a good time of discussion on Thursday nights and um, the first Thursday of every month we're going to try this for six months and see how it works. The first Thursday of every month that we are going to try to bring everybody that make this a priority, everybody on the worship team to come together on a first Thursday of every single month to fellowship to go listen to a teaching, and then to discuss the teaching. So we can grow together and bring unity and bring togetherness, and just so we can have this great discussions and grow together. And so the rest of the Thursdays, we'll just have a more of a normal practice, you know, we try to pursue like an hour of practice, and then still have, you know, 20 to 30 minutes of discussion after practice. So we can, we're continuing the discussion every week about what we talked about on the first Thursday or something else. And please, if you wanted to show up every Thursday and fellowship with them on the worship team, please come. You know, we'll have practices, but on the first Thursday, first Thursday of the month, we're not going to have practice, so I'll probably pick really easy songs for that Sunday. So, anyways, that's what those are some of the changes. That's what we're pursuing. That's what we're desiring for the worship team. So, please um, take this all seriously and come to the first Thursdays of the month to discuss a lot of these things that I pointed out. And um, I thank you, everybody, for your hearts, your desires, and, and running together on the worship team, pursuing what God has, because it's amazing times that we live in and what God's doing at Harvest Renewal. And I just I appreciate every single one of you. I, I'm so thankful. And let's pray blessings on every single one of you, that you would just grow and be excited for where we're going. And um, it's, yeah, let's go. I love you guys. Bless you.